What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. As always, it's Friendly Neighborhood Pro Gamer Pigusama, and today we're going to be playing Fortnite. We're going to be playing something different. We're going to be playing Fortnite Dungeons. Now, Dungeons are a challenge mode in the Fortnite campaign. They are really meant to test your hero builds and how well you can perform without your guns or without your traps or anything like that. And they added a new one this year, which I did not see coming. This game mode is essentially dead. So to see them add anything to it, including a whole new uh, playable section, is a pretty big deal to me. So we're gonna go ahead and try it out. First, I'm gonna show you my meta build that I like to go through the dungeons with. It's been consistent since dungeons first came out. If you're running this, you probably won't need anything else. Okay, so for the optimal dungeon build, or at least the dungeon build that I'm now using after doing some reevaluation, you're gonna wanna start it off with Commando Spitfire. Your whole reason for making this build is to focus on going commando. You want your going commando, your minigun to be as powerful as possible. You want your whole minigun thing to be as powerful as possible and you wanna get it as often as possible. First off, Commando Spitfire is gonna decrease going commando's cooldown by 66%. And then you're gonna get the team perk Happy Holiday, which reduces ability cooldown Cooldowns by 40%. So you're gonna have 106% ability cooldown, and that's gonna lead you to have your minigun. There's pretty much only gonna be a downtime of five or six seconds when you won't have your minigun. After that, you're gonna get Diecast Jonesy, who's gonna increase your going commando damage by 25%. Me, I have Birthday Brigade Ramirez, and she increases going commando duration by 5%, but you can get Sergeant Jonesy who's one of the very first default soldiers, and he'll do the same exact thing. Then I'm gonna have Sergeant Winter, who's snowing commando. He makes your going commando fire a snowball every 20 shots, which actually explode in a radius, so they're very useful for taking out groups of enemies. After that, I have Survivalist. Eliminations heal you for 93 base health over three seconds. This is just good so that you don't die. The whole thing is while you're using the minigun, Enemies are going to swarm you, and they can kill you with their damage, but if you're doing enough damage in front of you, you're not going to die. And for the fifth person on my hero loadout, I'm going to have Swamp Knight, because he is going to allow you to do extra damage to miss monsters based on the amount of health you are missing, and in these end fights, you will probably be missing a little bit of health. Let me put it this way. If you're losing health, you'll do more damage. If you're not losing health, you don't need to do any more damage. So it helps you when you're on the... Uh, when you're on the defensive. The Swamp Knight is easily obtainable during this Halloween season. Besides the Birthday Brigade Ramirez, which you can replace with the Sergeant Jonesy, the Sergeant Winter, which you'll be able to get in a couple months, there's nothing here that you shouldn't be able to get. I did have to use a recruitment token on Diecast Jonesy though. And that's the build, that's the basic build right there. 123, wow. You know, I'm 129, not to flex or anything, but you know. Here it is, Dungeon Boss. This guy is easy. He's just two stages. So I'll laser him the first hit. It won't matter soon. Vlad's coming back. I take his ass out. Vlad! Vlad is defeated. This one will be a way easier boss. I think this is just the, uh, the fire guy. We can defeat him super fast. The boss, with this build, the boss is so much easier than the rest of the dungeon. The dungeon itself is just tedious. How did this happen? Get us the hell out of this grotto, bro. This one takes forever. They're water shielded, which is actually unfortunate. We just have to whittle them down and stay safe. Okay, awesome. We got one down. Now it gets significantly easier. Now there's only two. Boom. Now it's just one. We got this. Now it's just clean up. Finally. Jesus Christ. This one took like a half hour, bro. <laughs> now I think this one's pretty easy too. 
just have to uh, take out this charger guy. I got him right here. I'm going to destroy him. There we go. We have unlocked the labs. This one is kind of interesting too, because it's not a, uh, it's not a traditional miss monster in there. It's actually like an upsized Fortnite VR character, and you have to collect blue glow as we're going through by eliminating miss monsters, so that we can use pylons at the end to weaken the guy. So make sure you're picking up the blue glow, pretty much. The big tip. We gotta find the dungeon keys. And they're spawning us on top in the Frost Knight map. Get you hyped up for the Christmas stuff. I do like Frost Knight. So that's cool. It's going to be here in a month or so. A month and a half. Got the key. We still got to go raise monoliths though. So Same shit. Same shit, different map right now at least. I mean, I appreciate that there's a different... It's disorienting actually coming out in a different spot when you start the dungeon. Because they're all the same. Starting spot is all the same in those first four. What? It says there's one below me. Oh, I found the I found where we're supposed to go. Oh, well, I'm about to grab this key, so yeah. Go. It's like all the way down under that base. You go through a vault, old vault door, like in VR. Yeah, so you open a little vault door. Chaos Agent is doing the narration, and it's the good doctor. You see that? It's Doctor Jekyll. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So we're probably going to end up fighting Mr. Hyde is what it is. <laughs> I love how they... It's different, but it's the same. Like, instead of torches, it's the little uh, the little light posts. Different, but it's the same. Instead of urns, it's little trash cans. Oh, yeah. Something's floating. It's a little taker. Maybe it's a special taker. He says this is a human husk hybrid. Like a human mist monster hybrid right here. Yeah, I destroyed it. He didn't deserve to live. An abomination like that. Oh my god. It like spawned more. It's like I destroyed one and it just spawned more. So one taker spawned two blasters. Oh my god, and it spawned three smashers. Look at that. And look at all that blue glow. That's what we need. We have to defeat the mist monsters to get their blue glow. So it was important that we destroyed those smashers. So I thought it was human mist monster hybrids, but it's just human husk. Aren't husks just humans? So he's taking husks, which are humans, and recombining them with humans. Yeah, whenever we find the, the jars with the uh, takers in them, we have to destroy all these guys. Well, he's dead. He's in the lava. He's definitely dead. Oh, but we found the key. Boom, right there, I got the shadow key. It seems like they really balanced out the urn amount in this because uh, there isn't that many. There's not nearly as many. I'm just super unfamiliar with this place, so I like have no bearing. All right, you should be able to do it. Wait. Damn, they sent a lot more after you in that end part. We don't need to destroy any of these. Watch out, watch out! No! You get a lot of gold in this because you get gold for killing these guys, bro. That's pretty intense. Wow, it's like a little atrium area. That's awesome. I'm noticing a consistent theme that is very strange to me where the bottom floor is the easiest floor. Yeah, like you wander around the first two floors lost wondering and then you get to the bottom and it's all perfectly lit up defeat hide hold hold up don't walk down this stair yet because he's not up here he's down this stair okay so when we get down there there's gonna be pylons somewhere 
and we're gonna have to put the, the blue glow into those pylons and then from there we'll be able to fight him but we won't really be able to defeat him until we do that here he is it's Hyde it's him it's pretty badass oh shit he like flings stuff at you I told you we have to put the pylons in we can't damage him <laughs> Get all the pylons. Oh, you already got this one. Actually, I think we gotta hit this guy now. Damn, I only had to do two and he's super vulnerable now. And he's done. We only had to do two of them. If we're on 140, we probably would've had to do more. There he is. <laughs> no good science and goes unpunished. That's the lesson for today. I definitely appreciated the novelty. It shows like it shows like they understood the shit that's kind of cheesy in the other dungeons and like worked to improve it a bit. Well, I appreciate that it had a different overworld that you start on, and then they tried to break up the fact that you can just plow through the boss by ha giving him a shield that you have to deactivate. So it gives you a little mini mission inside the dungeon. So that was kind of cool. And the environment was nice. It's cool. It's nice to see them using new assets, even though they're VR assets. It was good. It was good. Thanks for watching, everyone. Drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss a video. Peace and love.